say that. Eh. Hello, hello. All right, so it's Watch Me Work and it's, um, <laughs> what day is it? Anybody know? <clears throat> it's Tuesday. It's April 7th. It's April 7th, that's it. Thank you. I think that was Audrey. Thanks. See how we can't do it without you. Um, it's April 7th. It's Watch Me Work. It's a Tuesday. And um, uh, I'm going to do a little blurb for anybody who's new to Watch Me Work. Is anybody new to Watch Me Work? Or, or is at some point, one of you guys could just do the blurb for me because it's pretty much the same thing every day. Um, this is Watch Me Work. I'm Susan Laurie Parks. I've been doing this show for 11 years. Um, in the lobby of the public theater and of course all around the world but mostly in the lobby of the public theater where we have uh, done it live with an audience of writers and artists um, courtesy of the public theater big thank you to them also today for helping it happen also howl round has come on in recent years to help us live stream um, and they are here today and they have been here all last week and they'll be here forever helping us bring it to you guys. So big thank you to both of those organizations. Um, Watch Me Work, it, the title is tricky because the, the me in the title is you. It's all about you and your creative process. What we do, we create this play, if you will, together. Um, the first 20 minutes we work together. And then the remainder of the hour, I take your questions about your work and your creative process. So um, you get to ask me questions about your work, your creative process, process and not product. So if you've written something very beautiful, we won't have the bandwidth of the time to share it here. Um, uh, I'm just interested in talking about your work and your, uh, your creative process, okay? So we can have conversations that really will involve everybody um, who's, who's tuned in. Um, I know, I think I forgot like 12 things today. Audrey, what else do I have to say? <laughs> um, you sounded great. So, um, <laughs> um, so if you want to ask a question and you're in the zoom, what you need to do is, um, click on the raise your hand button. It should be in a participant tab. Uh, I think likely on the bottom of your screen, if you're on a laptop or on the top of your, on an iPad, um, it'll pop up a little icon so that we can see that your hand is raised uh, and I will unmute you when it's time to speak. Um, if you are watching on HowlRound.tv, you can ask us questions on our social media channels uh, at, on the, at the Public Theater's uh, Instagram and Twitter. Um, and then you can also tweet at us at, at WatchMeWorkSLP uh, with the hashtag HowlRound, H-O-W-L-R-O-U-N-D. And that's it. Well, one of those days, people, I'm talking with my mute button on. Um, we're going to work for 20 minutes, and then we will have time to talk about your work, uh, your creative process. Okay, so here we go.
Yay. Ooh. Yay. <laughs> Yay. All right. All right. So um, that was the uh, action part of the show. And now we're going to do the dialogue part of the show where you guys are going to ask me questions about your creative process or your work. So anybody have a question? Yeah, we've got Brian. I'm going to unmute All right, you. Brian. Brian. Hi. Hello. Hi. Hi. We hear Hi. you. Hi. Um, oh, so nice. Um, I'm calling in from Vancouver, Canada. So hello. Um, it's always been nice the last couple of days seeing my other van um, Canadian friends. Is Elaine in, in uh, do you know Elaine Avila? Uh, no? OK. OK, anyway, I'm just asking. <laughs> She's All not Canadians like your neighbor. Don't know each other, but maybe. okay, okay. Well, you'll probably meet like tomorrow at the grocery store, six feet apart. Okay. Awesome. Um, thank you, thank you so much for for doing this. Um, my question: I'm I've been trying to develop a writing practice. I usually work not as a as a writer. I'm a very reluctant writer, um, but I feel like a lot of that has been me telling that myself as opposed to someone else, and. Um, when I've been trying to put in the work in terms of coming to writing, doing my 20, 30 minutes a day, um, sometimes that ends up feeling like I'm, I'm journaling or I'm writing about personal things that ends up being like, I don't know what to write. I don't know what to write. I don't know what to write. Just to try and at least generate something. And I feel like sometimes that's um, at the end of it that I haven't done the work because I've written the same thing the last four or five days. Um, it's not all the time, but but sometimes I feel like I have this um, uh, this obstacle, and I'm feel like I feel like I didn't end up putting in the work because what came out was was a journal or a diary, and that's not necessarily um, what the intention was. Uh, so, I mean, I think I totally hear you. So you're 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 putting the time in to your writing practice, right? Um, you're doing 20, 30 minutes a day, right? Um, and for you, Brian, it feels like you're, you know, I'm just paraphrasing, you're journaling, you know, you're, you're just writing personal stuff, you're journaling, and you don't feel like you're doing the work. Is that kind of a... Yeah. Right. Um, <clears throat> because you feel like doing the work would, what would doing the work feel like or look like to you? Sometimes when I'm, when I have like a, a specific piece that I'm trying to write uh -huh. from day to day, it changes what I'm, what I'm trying to do. Um, it's about at least trying to generate some form of content that is related to that. Uh -huh. um, and so to, to leave that time, with at least something that's somewhat related as opposed to um, something that feels a little a little more like a journal. Right. Okay. Okay. So I mean there are two there, you know, there, there are many answers to every question. You know, I mean one answer is, you know, you you are doing the work by putting the time in. That's one answer, right? Okay. That's one answer. But because doing the work would look differently for you. I would suggest being a little, you know, turn, turn, you know, uh, do you work, you have a sweatshirt, a t-shirt on, do you work out? Do you, do you ever go to the gym or yeah. run yeah. or, okay, great. Have you ever used um, a treadmill? Yeah. Okay. Uh, great. Okay. So say you just, you know, run flat or walk flat on a treadmill, right? That's your workout. And you've been doing this for like every day and you're like, I'm not really seeing the fitness results I want. Right. What would you, probably do try and run faster try and run faster or you would they have you know those buttons yeah. where you increase the you know you know right you in, what is that incline right so you kind of increase the incline a little bit so let's try increasing the incline a little bit right instead of saying you're doing great brian you go to the gym every day what's your problem okay that's journaling's fine brian right you're doing the work. Let's increase the incline by saying, if you have something that you do want to work on and you say it changes from day to day, okay? Why don't we say, we're, pick one project and stick with it for, let's just say one week. 
okay? And every day your assignment is not just to sit down and journal, not just to go to the gym and walk on the flat treadmill, but to go to the gym and walk on a slight incline, sit down and when you write, stick to that subject. See what I mean? Mm -hmm. So when you find yourself veering off of the subject, right? Come back to it. So say your subject's about, you know, I don't know, it's a romantic comedy involving two awesome people living in a city, okay? And when you find yourself just writing about something that's not that, right? Wait a minute, I bring yourself back to it. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. Is that, I mean, does that sound weird? You're, I can't- No, I think, I think, I think I, I'm afraid, <clears throat> I'm afraid sometimes I'll come to that obstacle and then my, my mind will blank. And so in an effort to, just put in the work is to put in whatever is coming to mind. And then that ends right. up being the journal. Okay, that's okay. Okay, yeah. so so let's say in an effort to put in the work, put in things that in some way relate to the topic at hand. So if you're writing along, you say, okay, I'm gonna try to figure out the specifics of this, I'm imagining a rom-com about two wonderful people in an urban, you know, in a city, right? And you hit a wall, now you start thinking, okay, what are 10 stupid things that could happen between them right now? You see, so I'm asking myself a question. I'm giving myself a prompt, a mm. writing prompt that is directly related to my chosen uh, project, right? But by me asking myself to write down 10 stupid things, I am lowering the bar. Do you see what I mean? I'm keeping mm -hmm. it manageable, you see? So you're, you're, you're encouraging yourself to stay on the path, but you're also uh, you know, kind of keeping it loose a little bit. You, you know what I mean? So when you hit that block, I don't know what to write, right? I don't know what to write about my two characters in my romantic comedy. So the next line is, well, let me just think about what happened to me today. No, 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 that's getting off the subject, right? I don't know what to write about my two characters in my romantic comedy. So let me just think, what are their names? What could their names be? Here are 10 stupid names for one person and here are 10 stupid names for the other person. Okay, now how could they meet? I don't know. I don't know what to write about how they could meet. Okay, here are 10 stupid ideas. They have to be stupid because mm -hmm. by saying stupid, you're giving yourself, you're lowering the bar, right? And you're giving yourself, you're, you're giving yourself a chance to just be loose with it. Mm -hmm. And I, I guarantee one of those ideas is going to make you smile. And once you're smiling and you're like, I like that idea. They can meet at Starbucks. They're both wearing masks and they talk about robbing a bank or something. Oh, that's good. Okay, I'll go with that. Like that, you see? And you're charming yourself and you're charming your story or your play or your song or whatever to you, right? Right, yeah. You see what I mean? So you're kind of, you're encouraging yourself to stay on the path. That's the thing, Okay. For someone, just so you know, for someone who couldn't pick up their notebook every day, right? You know, I want to write, but I, I have trouble picking up my notebook and sitting down and writing. Then we would just say journaling is fine. But you're you're past that point, Brian. So we're going to give you we're going to we're going to increase the incline a little bit. Okay. Great. great. I'm I'm definitely still afraid, but I'm going to try. Okay, just try. Just remember, ten stupid ideas. They have to be yeah. stupid. They have to be stupid. And when you get to the, I don't know what to write. Next word about. Next word, my next phrase, subject that you've chosen for the week. Right. I'm definitely good at stupid, so I can do that. Okay. There, see, we all are. Welcome to welcome to the squad, yo. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Thank, thank you, me. Brian. Thanks, Brian. Um, all right. The next person we have is Adam. Adam. Um, hello. Hi. Hi. Um, my question is about scope. Um, I feel like one piece of writing advice that I've gotten a lot uh, that's actually been really helpful is specifically uh, building character and realize, making character drive the story and the plot. Um, mm -hmm. And the struggle I'm having with that is that I'm building, I'm getting very generative about building these characters, knowing their backstories. And um, I feel like I'm at a point where initially I wanted to tell a, a story that was set um, in one year between two people and now I'm very invested and interested in everything that has led up to that. And I feel like my play, if I write it with everything I want to happen in it right now will be like 17 hours long. And so 
I'm thinking about scope and specifically how to create structure among, amidst the chaos of like creative energy. Right, right, right. Cool, cool. So, so um, you're doing, you're writing a, a play about a, a year in the life of these two characters. Two characters, did I get it right? Uh -huh. the, yeah. I would say two protagonists, yes. Two protagonists, yeah. great. Yeah. And you you really you let character drive the story. That's sort of been uh, a great note that you've gotten. And so now your let character drive the story has encouraged you to do a lot of, um, not research, but discovery about the backstories <laughs> of your characters. I call it research because it is almost like research, even though mm. you're making it up. Yeah. Yeah, and a lot of us, uh, get lost in research yeah it's like yeah. it's like if it were a historical character um an historical character you you might be spending all your time you know online or whatever right. you know, researching all this guy ah, ha, ha, yeah right right. <laughs> right so you have to know uh when to stop right yeah I, yeah i suppose how, the one way to put it is that i feel like i I'm interested in these characters because they're helping me drive towards this theme or this idea that I'm trying to explore or question. But then as their stories build up, I feel like everything feels integral or part of the plot. And I don't know where, what is backstory versus what is the story that I'm telling. Right, right. And this, right. And the backstory is the stuff that it's like, you know, mulch and the tree or, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So what, and we, we, I quote, I, there was this Rumi quote, I think it was, you know, wisdom is knowing what to, what to ignore and what to pay attention to. Mm -hmm. And it's not that I want you to ignore parts of your characters, mm -hmm. but I do want you to focus again, like, kind of like Brian, you got to focus on what is, is the most important thing. And you're going to focus on aspects of their character that are going to dr actually drive your story. So if I sat here and start talking to you about, you know, I was I was born in blah 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 blah, you know, that's not going to answer your question, right? Mm -hmm. Even though it might be really interesting, or maybe not. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> but it's true, and it's part of my life. It's not going right. to help drive this conversation. Right. It's going to help get this conversation off track, right? Mm -hmm. What I'm doing is I am focusing on what's going to drive this conversation. So the fact that one of your characters might, um, I don't know, have uh, no toes or something might be interesting, might drive the story. That's an, a random silly thing I just chose. But um, you have to think which details are going to drive the story. Which details tell you something about what the character wants? Because it's not just historical stuff that we're interested in as uh, writers as dramatists it's it's stuff that helps you generate action right so the fact that uh, hamlet likes potatoes right mm -hmm. it's interesting maybe you know what i mean right but the fact that he has a real problem with his uncle is the thing that we're really wanting to focus on right you see what i'm saying uh -huh. You see how we, we're choose so we're not going to have him give a speech about potatoes necessarily, even though that might have been in the earlier draft. Mm -hmm. We are going to give have him give speeches about his uncle. Okay. You, you see the see the difference? So we yes. just have to choose. Totally. Um, of course, also your your play might be seventeen, you know, whatever, you yeah. know. I mean, if, and you can write that play too. I'm not saying don't write that play, but if you want right. to write a short, if you want to write a play that's a certain thing then you have to choose. That doesn't mean it can't be very rich in detail. Right. Okay. Yeah. Um, Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thanks so much. Um, all right. Next we have Hannah. Oh, hello. Hannah. Hey, Hannah. Can you hear me? Yeah. yeah, we can hear you. Cool. Hi, SLP. Um, thank you so much for doing this. It's really- You're Hannah, Hannah. Hi. Hi. <laughs> Hello. How are you? I'm good. Um, now I can do, I can come to watch me work from England. So it's Yay. wonderful. Yay. Where in England um, are you, girl? Huh? Where in England are you? I'm in Hampshire. Yeah. How are you in the parents' that? house. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I hear you. Um, to you. you too. Um, my question is about a kind of problem I think I've had for like as long as I've been writing. 
and mm. it feels like a kind of immature writer problem um which is that um my supporting characters i.e like not my central antagonist and protagonist um kind of fizzle out halfway through the mm. script um and so i'm just i i feel like i don't know how to give them a suitable arc or if they even need an arc but i just don't know how to keep them keep them in there and keep them meaningful mm -hmm, mm -hmm. um and i end up kind of either cutting them and making it a two-hander or making kind of a jumbly ensemble piece even if that's completely not what the play is uh -huh, um uh -huh. and yeah uh-huh yeah writing the, that's a great question writing those um those you know if you will smaller characters um can be tricky and do you even if you get you know you give your big characters sort of a big fat arc right a big yeah. fat storyline yeah nice and rich and full of all kinds of things and then you give your smaller characters maybe a thinner storyline you know yeah. um do you do you um spend any time sort of detailing out the beats of your smaller character storylines not so much i have sometimes but i feel like they when i do that i end up i don't know it feels like i'm focusing too much on them and then i like feel guilty that, that they're not a big enough character and i try and make oh. them the main character oh oh well okay <laughs> but <laughs> But now you're in a trap. Now you're in a trap. No, I would say go ahead and and I mean, for example, it, it depends, you know, say it's a character about a woman and her mother will just say a woman and, and her spouse and the mother is one of the less smaller characters. Right. And we're going to put her like this is the mother character. Right. So in this version of the show, the daughter is the main character and the daughter's spouse or the daughter's child. They're up here. And the mother is back here, right? Mm -hmm. So in this version of the character, the mother is, you know, kind of, you know, right? But yeah. She still has a storyline, right? She's still doing yeah. shit. She still wants things, maybe for the daughter, maybe not, maybe for herself, you know? Now, that's one version of the story. That's one version of the play. You don't have to feel guilty because in another version that someone else might write or you might write at a later time, you might do this. Yeah. You see what I mean? So it's not like you're sort of giving the mother character the short shrift, you know? Yeah. Just because she's kind of in the background, if you will. You just right now you're focusing on this. I mean, it's like it's like a Hamlet again. I mean, you know, it's 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 Gertrude isn't you know Gertrude isn't up here, right? Gertrude yeah. back here, but she's doing some cool shit, you know? Claudius isn't really up here. Claudius is kind of back here, but he's doing the ghost right yeah they're all kind of back here and that's kind of cool in a, in a way um Shakespeare does that really well he does give his 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 smaller characters you know some cool storylines yeah right? I mean Lady McBee right she's got the <laughs> oh. yeah. she's our she's our she's our patron saint folks yeah she's washing her hands she's washing her hands uh anyway okay uh, but but you know but you see what i mean right you can yeah. look at some of those smaller characters and know that it's only because you've decided to focus on the character you've decided to focus on yeah and these other characters gladly let me tell you how happy they are to be in your play and how happy they are to help right and they don't yeah. mind that they're not th the main character. They're happy doing this shit. That's cool, right? That's some cool shit to do back there. Woohoo! Look how much fun they're having doing their little journey. Next time around, they know it's going to be them. In another incarnation, if you look at it from another angle, it is all about them. The mother thinks it's all about her. Lady McBee thinks it's all about her, doesn't she? Woohoo! Look at me in the background. Okay. So okay. put in the time to these minor characters. Um, and, and really know that they're very happy to be included. Okay. Play. Okay. Because if you can develop you. a major character, you can develop a minor one. I know. I know you. I know you can do it. <laughs> okay. Ha <laughs> ha. Hi. Uh, thank you. Thanks, Anna. Um, all right. Up next, we have Tammy. 
Tiana, oh, where are you there? Great, thank you. Um, and thank, thank you. you so much for being here. I really, really appreciate it. It's the oh. first kind of week I've been able to attend. All right. Um, so I've been writing a, a sort of multi-character solo show from other people's perspectives, if that makes sense. And the way that I've been able to try and get into those characters is sort of making them amalgamation of, of you know, real people and, and making them fictional. And I'm really stuck on one particular character mm -hmm. and I'm having a lot of trouble writing their, their piece. I can't seem to get into their head. Um, and I don't know if it's because it's too personal and I'm kind of, it's someone that I have a lot of dislike for. Mm -hmm. And I wonder how you would advise kind of opening up to that character or, or sort of finding a way to to find their voice without that judgment and making them human and, and finding out what they actually need to say. Mm -hmm. Wow, that's pretty exciting. Sounds like an exciting project, Tammy. Thank you. Um, so this this character you don't like, you don't like them. So they're, and correct me if I'm, they're based on someone you know? No. Yes. Yes. Ah, they're based on someone you know inspired by sure, 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 sure. this one's inspired by them a little bit too much okay okay great what yeah. can you what can you change about them can you change their you mean you know what i mean so inspired by a little too much so how can you step back from that person that you know into more of a a, a, a person that you're creating is there anything that you can change about them that you'd, you'd kind of enjoy? Like if they're a, uh, if they identify as male, could they be someone who identifies as female? If they, you know, if they're tall, could they be short? If they're, could you, you know, you see what I mean? Is there anything about them you could change up to create some distance or that you'd want to, or you want them to be? I'd, I'd love to change some things. Okay. And then they, I, I somehow get stuck and it doesn't seem, True. And I, I think because all these different character monologues are in relation to this main character um, who is, in, I guess, inspired by my own life. And so maybe I'm getting too caught up in what he means to her. That I, I it, for some reason, this one feels really rigid. And I, uh -huh. I don't know what to change. Well, Pick, choose something maybe just, okay. just and I'm not saying to, to, to be final about it I'm saying to give yourself a way in you know what I mean like is he is this character really smart no, no okay. <laughs> then, then then make them smart okay you see what I'm saying give yourself a way in change it up a little bit um you okay. know so make them they're really smart make them um how smart could they be could they be uh, in a you know in a real way university educated maybe very oh, learned. that's interesting yeah okay. just, just kind of ch change it a little bit to give yourself again we're creating distance and whether you after you've sort of fig f her started hearing their voice you can change it back to the way that you if you want it the other way or, or whatever are they are they uh handsome in real life in real life are they handsome no no make their and they're handsome Okay. Are they funny? Do they make jokes? Um, really off color jokes, like really like uh, inappropriate jokes. Right, uh, inappropriate jokes. And do people laugh at these inappropriate jokes? He does. He does, great. You yeah. can make this person be very witty. Huh. And everybody laughs. Oh my God, he's the life of the party. He's the kind of person who goes into the party and there's a piano and they play and everybody loves them or something. I don't know. I'm, all I'm saying is you can change up things about the character so that you can meet them in a fresh way. So that maybe you can like, you can not like them, but you can sort of be interested in hearing what they have to say. I like that. Thank you. You know? Let's we'll see if it works. How okay, I'll try that. Oh, you're smiling now. That's that's something. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Thank Tammy. You. Thank you, Tammy. All right. Up next, we have Viviana. 
Whoa, I didn't actually think I'd be chosen. Okay. Uh oh. <laughs> and now I'm nervous. I actually got picked. I did it for fun. Okay. <laughs> um, uh -oh. <laughs> hello. Um, okay. I guess um, so. My question is very, I guess, personalized to me in my particular circumstances. Um, okay. That um, my current relationship to writing is like super weird. Um, just because I like I've been a part of writing programs since I was 13. Um, I'm one of those kids. <laughs> um, I actually think it's kind of messed. I think writing programs are kind of messed up now. Um, but anyway, um, and like I've written a book and I've written a play and like blah, 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 blah. And like I have like cool accolades and like cool. Um, but um, my like relationship with my writing has just recently gotten very like anxiety inducing. Um, like to the point where like, I, it's like, it's like, I've been in a long marriage and I'm kind and like, <laughs> and I wonder sometimes if I should get a divorce. <laughs> um, and like, I don't have uh, an everyday writing practice and I've always like termed myself a project person. Um, but I don't have a project right now. Um, so like, I feel weird and I like think about starting projects and then like, like but then they like let months go by and then I'm like, yeah, never mind. Um, and right now actually I'm having lots of like the random thoughts I have are about theater projects instead of writing projects, which is interesting. But yeah, I'm just like wondering if you have any advice for like finding joy in it again and like making it stop being a scary thing for like someone who used to find joy in it and now finds it scary. Yeah, you've been, wow, you've been in writing. Did you say you've been in writing pro since you were 13? Yeah, I went to like a magnet school. Um, mm -hmm. And then I go to Columbia now. Um, and I did creative writing as a major. And then I switched to theater with acting as a concentration. Oh, great. Um, yeah. And then I, I like fell into playwriting uh, like two years ago. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. But like I'm very genre all over the place. But yeah. Right. Right. Well, it's all writing. I mean, you, you know, that's cool. That's cool. But finding fun in it, I mean, what would getting divorced from writing look like to you? I mean, so like, it's very scary for me because I've like conceptualized of my identity as writer for such a long time. Um, like I like, I'm getting anxious even now, like saying that I'm not a writer anymore. Um, but like, I have like had the thought of like, this thing makes me so anxious that I wonder if it's even good for me. Um, but I don't think, I don't know. It's yeah. So I like getting divorced would mean like it's no longer like a pressing issue in the back of my mind that I don't write all the time or don't have a project right now. Um, and like I've I've like given myself units of time where I let like I, I studied abroad in Morocco a year ago and I was like and it was a journalism thing um, and I let myself like not be a writer that semester. And it was so easy and so nice. <laughs> um, but then I also knew that I would like start thinking about writing again. And, and yeah. Um, and then after that, I had to write a play for a, a theater company and I kind of slogged through it and then later realized I don't think I actually wanted to write that play, but it was good, I guess. <laughs> um, yeah. Do you have any, um, any uh, bills that need paying because of your writing? No, I, I mean, pff, I'm about to graduate this semester <laughs> and okay. money, okay. job. <laughs> know, but, so, but so it's not like if you took a, a breather from, from writing, it wouldn't, you know, put your household in, in, in financial jeopardy. No, I'd probably just feel weird, though. <laughs> no, well, it wouldn't. No, it wouldn't. Well, I, I would, I would you know, feel weird. Come back to it. I mean, because it, it's like, it's like, what do you do? You, you don't, you want to take a break from it. So uh, you could, you know, double down and write every day and see what happens. But you've been writing since you were 13. You're like, you know, I got to say, when you're talking, it was like John Benet Ramsey. Those three words came to my mind. You know, I'm like, ooh, um, a couple of months just chilling, you know. Um, enjoying yourself doing something that you really want to do you know think of things that you really want to do um, you know I mean sure writers write but there are plenty of writers who take you know hiatuses you know you can take a hiatus for take a hiatus for like a week and just say I'm not going to write this week I don't feel like it. It, it 
when sometimes when we get into things like John Benet Ramsey, does everybody know what I, who I'm talking about when I say John Benet Ramsey? You know, a lot of times we get into things when we're young and we identify, we attach our self worth with these things when we're very young, uh, not very young, but you know, 13 is pretty young, and we get accolades and, and appreciation and approval for certain things, and we think, who am I if I'm not that? If I'm not doing that anymore, right? Um, not to diminish the quality of your writing or your commitment to the craft, but if you're feeling that way now, the way you're feeling now, I would say a week off, just, you know, seeing what else there might be out there. Where do you live? Do you live in New York? Where do you live? I'm, I'm dorming at Columbia right now. I don't know where okay. I'm going to live after this. Okay, but yeah. no, no, but, <laughs> but what I mean is where are you living right now? So right now you're at Columbia University, right? Yeah. In, in, on the Upper West Side. So what I'm saying is you could, uh, if it's, you know, if you feel it's safe and appropriate, you could go outside wearing your mask and washing your hands after you come inside. You could go outside for a walk and just breathe and look around, you know? Why don't you see what else, where your mind wanders? You know what I'm saying? It's a, also, it might be a, in response to graduating and maybe you don't want to be a professional writer, you know? You know, you can take a week off. Take a week off, see what happens. You know what I mean? Um, I, you know, I don't, I don't know. A lot of people get into writing for different reasons. Some people have to pay the rent. Some people have to, you know, prove themselves to their parents or all kinds of things. Um, you know, uh, you just have to sort of give yourself the space, especially these days. It's very, we're under very stressful times these days and a lot of things are uncertain, you know, and, and weird, you know, and different. And you can't even go outside without wearing a mask. And do you even have a mask? I made one out of a cloth I got in Cambodia, you know, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So it's a lot of, it's a lot of uncertainty right now and confusion and, and people are, worried and, and people are dying, you know, of, of, of complications of this thing. So it's okay to take a week off and just say, I'm just going to breathe and meditate maybe, you know, and maybe listen to music. You know, do you like listening to music? I like dancing. <laughs> well, there you go. So put on some music and dance. You know, instead of sitting down at your desk and writing and doing, working on a project that you really don't want to work on, you know, <laughs> put, on, put on some music and dance for 20 minutes a day and let that be your writing practice. Do you see what I'm saying? Yep. Oh my God, I'm crying. What the heck? <laughs> well, it, is, it is a time for tears, people. It is a time for tears and crying is, is, a, is a sign of strength, you know? Yeah. There's nothing, there's nothing wrong with weeping. A lot of people take, you know, crying and tears as a sign of weakness. I, I am, I do not believe that. I think tears are a sign of strength. You are feeling things. That's good. We need to feel things. So take a week off, but you know, I tell you what, take a week off, but why don't you come back here to watch me work? We do it five days a week, you know, Monday through Friday. Just come back here. You don't have to write. You can just go, la, 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 we're all working. <laughs> you know, you can just go, la, 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 la. Maybe you want to write. That's cool. Then, then write if you want to. But if you don't, that's fine. Just sit here and hang out with us, okay? Because we're your yeah. squad and we're going to hang out with you. We'd love to hang out with you. Yeah, I'm okay. trying to make this my Tuesday thing. <laughs> there, there you go. Then let it be your Tuesday thing, okay? Okay. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you so much. <laughs> um, all right, we've got about three minutes left. Should we do one more? Um, all right, we've got Crystal. Oh, hi. <laughs> hi again, Crystal. How are you doing? I'm good. Good to see you. How's Jersey? It's so Jersey. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I, I have been on every day since, since we started. And um, I think I told you I was having trouble, like just finding inspiration, finding anything to write about. And um, so I just tried to find time to just, just think. And I did the letter thing to like trying to find that creative voice again. I gave her a name and wrote to her um, and didn't hear anything. Then I had like a, a, a voice, not a voice, but like a person, sort of a person. And then like a set of people um, 
but no story, just like a person and 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 like an it was an Asian girl and then like four four or five black girls, and and it was in Brooklyn and it was Asian black relations, and that's all I have, and I kind of was like okay. I have this now, but I don't know where to go with it. I feel like it's like writing 101. Like I, I, I've written plays, but I feel like I don't know what I'm doing anymore um, and how to get back into like trying to find a story and trying to find them again. Mm -hmm. um, so I guess I, I guess what I'm saying is even writing, I've done also the letter thing where I'm trying to hear her, um, but it's just very general. So I guess I guess I'm trying to figure out what's next. What, where do I, what do I do next? Mm -hmm. That's cool. Okay, Crystal, we can do again, our, our 10 stupid things, you know, what could these people be doing? You know, mm -hmm. um, you could do some character biographies, but like I said to, was it Brian? Who was it in the beginning? Um, whoever was in the, not to get too, yeah, not, yeah, there's Brian, not to get too, uh, uh, Adam, not to get too sort of, not to overdo it with your character biography, right? So you wanna do some character biographies on them and get some specifics about these characters, okay? Mm -hmm. And then start thinking about where these characters might intersect. Are they roommates? Do they live in the same building? Do they live on the same block? Do they go to say the same school, you know? Mm -hmm. what, what's their story? Do they work in the same place or, you know? Yeah, they live, they live, uh, well, the girl, they live in the same neighborhood and one it's like a beauty supply store uh -huh, that's, uh -huh. their that's next to one of the girls houses okay great okay okay so just get specific on who these people are right okay i mean and then what are they doing and what do they want each character this one wants this, this one wants to do that. This one, wants, and then where are the intersections of their stories, you know? Yeah, okay. Okay, and see how far you get with that. And your ideas that you come up with don't have to be good. Again, they can be, they can be stupid. Okay. <laughs> okay just, just cause you just wanna turn out a lot of ideas and then you wanna look at it and you're gonna go, okay. Um, I, I like this idea, I like this idea, okay? Yeah. And then start telling yourself the story. So there are these four women and this one's this and this one's this and this one's this and this one's this. And then they do this and this and this. And then this one does that. And this one does that. And in the end they do that. You see, yeah. you wanna start telling yourself the story of your play, novel, you know, whatever, or, you know, theater piece, film, teleplay, right? Yeah. 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 Does that make sense? It makes total sense. Yeah, just ground yourself in the story as much as possible. I would say, instead of thinking so much about the, the issue, you know, black Asian relations, okay? Dig deeper now. Dig deeper. You know what I'm saying? Tell me the story, you know? Cause I mean, yeah. you could say, okay, Hamlet's about father son relations. Well, geez, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. You got a lot more than that. You know, right? So we want to dig deeper than that. We want to give, give me something, give me something that I'm going to go, wow, cool. I'm leaning in now, you know? Give me some stuff and, about the characters, okay? And that comes from writing the 10 stupid things about... That comes from just thinking about your characters. Okay. You know, this character wants this. This character wants this. She's doing this. She's doing this. Okay. Okay. And, yeah. tell, and telling yourself the story of your play. Practice by, if you want, read a play that you like and, and then close, you know, read a play, right? Yeah. And then tell yourself the story of that play. That's really good practice, right? So if you like, I don't know what, but I'm looking around, see if I have any, all these plays on the shelves, but read a play. And then tell yourself the story or even type it out. This is the story of Hamlet. This is how it goes. Get in the habit of telling yourself the story. Of the play. Okay. Okay. 
Okay, because the issues can be kind of summed up like, you know, like a thumbnail sketch. Like a what? Like a thumbnail sketch or, a, you know, mm -hmm. like a telegram from Western Union, right? Yeah. You, you want something more than that. Right. Okay. I can work okay. on that. Yeah. Good, oh, good Crystal. <laughs> Thank okay. you. Awesome. Well, it is 6.04. Shall we come back tomorrow? Yes, let's come back tomorrow. <laughs> Amazing. So as a reminder, if you want to sign up for a class, sign up by 3 p.m. each day on the Public Theater website. Um, today we had an issue. It seems like some people didn't get the link. So if you don't see an email tomorrow and you signed up, check your spam folder just in case. Um, but other than that, I think we're, we're here Monday to Friday, 5 p.m. Thanks. Thank you, guys. Thank you, people. See you tomorrow. <laughs>